Stop 4. Guernsey State Park Museum. In order to truly understand and appreciate the significance of the Guernsey Museum, we must first look at both its original design and construction and the stories presented within its stone walls. The structure was one of the first trailside museums in the country. An innovative approach at the time, the trailside museum provided an educational experience within a recreation area. The concept proved quite successful, and the Guernsey Museum became the model for the design and construction of future trailside museums, including ones in Yellowstone and Glacier National Parks. The museum's structure, both exterior and interior, are essentially the same as when it was constructed in the 1930s, a testament to the architects and young men who built it. In fact, the Guernsey Museum is identified and described in the book Park Structures and Architecture for its rustic design and structural quality. The massive stones used to construct the museum were quarried here in the park. Imagine the extreme effort and physical stamina of the men who manually hoisted and positioned each stone into place. It's a remarkable example of their craftsmanship and hard work. The museum's stone floor was originally quarried and laid out for assembly in Thermopolis, Wyoming. It was then disassembled and shipped to the museum for reassembly stone by stone. If you look closely, you can still see arrangement numbers on some of the floor's stones. The museum is a wonderful example of rustic architecture. As you walk around the structure, listening to the wind whistling through the pines, you can see how its low profile, native sandstone, and log beams allow the structure to blend easily into the landscape around it. In fact, if you position yourself in front of the museum, where you can view the hillside behind it, you can see how the low profile of the building and its roof lines mimic the curvature of the rocky knoll behind it. The exhibits within the museum are very much the same as when they were first conceptualized and built in the 1930s. Even when viewed in light of today's standards for exhibit design, the interpretive panels, models, and backgrounds at the museum do a remarkable job of communicating the history of this region. The person responsible for these exhibits was John C. Ewers, a prominent young museum designer with the National Park Service. Ewer's innovative approach to interpretive storytelling and exhibit design served him well during his career, which included assignments as associate curator for the Smithsonian Institution and director of the National Museum of American History. His work greatly influenced museum exhibit design for years to come. <laughs>